The new exotic scout rifle is pretty difficult to get, unless you follow this guide, in which case it's actually pretty easy to get. First, we'll talk about how to access the mission in the first place. After that, we'll go over what loadouts you want to run for the easiest possible clear. And then finally, I'll show you exactly how to run the mission, along with a bunch of secret tips, to make your clear as easy as possible. So please consider liking and subscribing if you like videos that make your destiny grind easier. And let's get started. To enter the mission, you must be in a fire team that across all three individuals holds all three of the exotic fish. You yourself do not need to have all three of the fish, or even any of the fish for that matter, to be able to enter the mission and get the weapon. You simply need to be with someone who does. So for example, if you have zero exotic fish, your friend has zero exotic fish, but some random dude on LFG you teamed up with has all three, then you're good to go. Or as another example, if you each had one exotic fish from each location, one from the EDZ, one from Nessus, and the one from the Throne World, you would also be good to go. To check which exotic fish you have, simply look at your tackle box in your inventory and look for the line that notes which broken blades you have and from which locations. If you don't see this line anywhere on your box, then you probably don't have any exotic fish. If you want to go get the exotic fish yourself, you simply have to fish at a pond with increased activity for that day, as listed on the tackle box. Head to that pond, fish till you get the exotic, and then dunk it in the helm to receive the broken blade that will allow you to activate the statue for that fish. Typically, there is one increased activity location per day, but ever since the release of the new exotic mission, all three have been active at once. It is unknown at this time if all three will remain active permanently, but right now, they all are. Now, once you acquire your fish or find a team that already has them, you'll want to construct your loadouts for the tankiest tormentor in Destiny history. The number one thing that you'll want to make this thing an absolute breeze is a Well of Radiance Warlock with Divinity. Tormentors are super annoying to fight because their crit is a pain to hit, and hitting anything other than their crit does really poor damage. But with Divinity, hitting crits is insanely easy, making the toughest part of fighting Tormentors disappear entirely. Bonus points too if your Warlock has the new Cenotaph exotic helmet to auto-reload the Divinity during the DPS phase. But if they don't, Starfire Protocol will work just fine. I also found huge success by running Double Special as the Divinity Warlock player, as killing trash mobs with my heavy machine gun gave me a much higher chance of special ammo drops to make sure that I always had full Divinity Reserves going into a DPS phase. Your other two players will want to be on pretty much anything that can put out a solid amount of damage into a crit spot. While I was doing carries to help people get the weapon myself on my stream at twitch.tv slash we saw big success from weapons like Legend of Acrius, Thunderlord, Retrofit Escapade, and perhaps most notably, the Root of Nightmares Linear Fusion Rifle, Briar's Contempt, which has an origin trait that literally deals bonus damage to Tormentors. As far as classes go, your other two players can run whatever they want. However, for supers, I would recommend Gathering Storm if they are on Hunter, Thundercrash if they are on Titan, and Needle Storm or a second Well of Radiance for the bonus Warlocks. Now, as for beating the mission itself, you'll have to launch the Deep Dive activity in the Helm to begin your journey to the mission. Keep in mind that although the mission is entered from the Deep Dive, Asa's buffs do not carry over to the mission, but the Toland Orb difficulty increases do seem to. So avoid interacting with Toland and don't invest too much thought into which Asa buffs you acquire. You'll begin by entering the deep dive and following the path shown on screen to the first statue where you'll insert the first broken blade. You'll then continue the deep dive as normal and complete the first phase of the dive. After completing the first phase, you'll see an open door up on a ledge to the left side of the arena, inside of which will be the second statue. You'll then continue through the deep dive as normal, following the path shown on screen by hugging the left side wall to activate the third statue. Once all three statues are active, you can continue on to the second phase of the dive and beat it opening a door on the far right side of the arena that you'll head into. Inside this door will be three statues that your fire team will have to interact with. 
with one player activating each statue. These statues have absolutely nothing to do with who has which exotic fish or anything like that, so just have each player interact with one and you'll be good to go. After hitting all three statues, you can head through the water and progress through a few packs of enemies. Keep in mind the mission timer has not started yet, so no need to rush here. After about a minute of enemies and water sections, you'll meet a boss knight named Cole who will introduce you to the damage mechanic of this mission, which is as simple as killing mini boss minotaurs to acquire a stacking damage buff. Each servile minotaur kill will grant you one stack of deathly sharp, which can stack up to three times where it will then go on a timer and allow you to do proper DPS to both this executioner knight and eventually the final tormentor boss. Once you drop the health of the knight to the first cutoff, he will disappear and a new door will open, upon which entering will begin the 10 minute timer of the mission. You'll then clear out some enemies and hit the pyramid crystal to open the door to the next room, wiping out even more enemies and then hitting another crystal underneath the stairs to open the door to the night boss room. Here you'll wipe out the enemies in the room, most notably the servile minotaur, and then find the pyramid crystal somewhere in the middle of the arena to open the barriers on the left and right to grant you access to the other two servile minotaurs to allow you to acquire all three stacks of your deadly sharp buff. Once you kill the third minotaur, immediately use all supers, divinity, and heavy ammo to nuke the knight and every single enemy in the room. It should die pretty quickly. After killing the knight, a stairway will open that will take you to a rally flag location to refresh all of your ammo and supers before allowing you to hop down into the final boss arena, a very simple maze consisting of loads of corridors that you and your team must search through to find the three servile minotaurs for your stacking damage buff. A quick tip here is that we noticed that after a certain amount of time, the minotaurs seemed to be marked with kill patrol symbols to reveal their locations to make it easier to find them. Once you kill all three and acquire your timed Deathly Sharp DPS buff, the Tormentor will also be marked by the Kill Patrol symbol to reveal his location and will head back to the middle of the arena. You'll then head over there, pop the well, let the Divinity and Supers rip, and unload every bullet you have. After your damage buff runs out, Three more minotaurs will spawn throughout the maze, and you'll rinse and repeat the process. Although a very important secret tip here is that we did notice if you drop the Tormentor to 50% HP, the minotaurs would exclusively spawn in the middle of the arena for the rest of the fight, making subsequent DPS phases significantly quicker to get to. As for staying alive during the fight, there are a healthy amount of adds in the middle at the very beginning that don't seem to respawn too quickly, so it can be great to use the first 10 or 20 seconds of your DPS phase to focus exclusively on wiping out the adds before turning your attention to the boss. Additionally, whilst he hurts a lot, you are practically immune to him in a well of radiance. So for that 30 second period, you can basically hug him while you spray him with divinity and heavy machine guns. And if you're still struggling to find teammates or beat the mission, you can join my Discord server and use the LFG server in there to find a squad to roll with, or hop into my stream at twitch.tv slash and run it with me. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, have a great day.